So what's up? I know you guys are just incredibly excited about continuing this series, right? <laughs> I know, uh, I know, yeah, be worth the one night stand. All right. All right, well, check this out. Here's the deal. Um, tonight's going to be a really busy night, but I've got some really, really good information I've got to get to you, and then we're going to break off into our discussion group. So here's the deal. Guys on the back row, listen up. They've called you down. I'm not calling you down. It's either, it's either be quiet or hit the door. Okay? It's the way I feel. I love you with the love of Jesus, but I'm not here to babysit you. I'm not here to hold your hand. You're either going to listen by the word or you can leave. That's for anybody else in here that wants a little bit of it too. Okay? All right. Now with that said and done, if you don't have the, the unction in you to stop after it's already been prayed in the name of Jesus to be quiet, you got a problem, but we'll carry on anyway. All right, so here's the deal. It's our second week in the study of sex, dating, and what God's Word says. And I'll just be honest with you, I know it's an uncomfortable topic for you all, and it's not real comfortable for me. But I've had some parents phone call, and I've had some parents call, and they say, well, I'm concerned about what you're teaching, and blah, 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 and stuff. And so here's the deal. I understand that. Okay, that's cool. I'm glad that you're concerned. But here's the deal. I teach what God's Word says. I'm not giving you my input. I'm not giving you their input. I'm not giving you the world's input. It's an, it's straight out of God's Word. If God, amen, if God did not want us to learn about sex, why would he put it in his Word? I mean, if God did not want us to say, hey, this is what sex is for and this is what sex is not for, then why would he give us the instruction in God's Word? And you see, it's like I said last week, we look and we hear all the time, well, don't have sex until you're married, and, you know, don't have premarital sex, and blah, 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 and all this and this and this and this with sex. And we think, hey, you know what? I am going to stretch the limits because the way we are as humans, we like to stretch the limits. We like to say, well, how far is too far with sex? It, what, if, what if we just mess around just a little bit and my hand goes down her pants and, and her hand down mine? Is that too far? Is, is that considered sex? Because we like to stretch the limit. But what happens is there's a line in between right and wrong, and we like to waver on it like we're walking a, a balancing beam, but we always fall off on the wrong side. You never fall off on the right side. And so what happens is so many times we say that we're going to stop and we say we're going to get to a point and we're going to control ourselves, but then it gets out of hand and we go too far. And so what I'm doing tonight is I'm not here to condemn you guys. None of us are. But what I want to do is give you words that will help you and encourage you and, and, and will make you stronger in your faith and in your walk with Jesus Christ. Okay? So here's the deal. Um, I, I want to. I had some questions asked last week, and, and before we get started tonight, I want to try to answer just a few of them. I'm not going to get through all of them, but I do want to answer a few um, questions excuse me, that, that we were asked last week. Um, one of the first questions that I, I pulled out of the thing, it says, Is being a male virgin good? Well, of course so. It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female or, or, well, that's the only two options you got. So it doesn't matter what you are. Yes, it's good to be a virgin. You know, see, here's the deal, uh, and, and we're going to talk about this a little later on. When, when God designed sex, it wasn't saying, hey, guys, hey, young people, check this out. God has made sex, and it's super special, so go as far as you can, and, but don't touch it. Because I'm trying to keep something back from you. God is saying, I have a gift for you, and I want to give it to you. But the only way you're going to fully get this gift is if you wait until it's time to receive it. Growing up, my grandmother always used to give me savings bonds. Anybody know what a savings bond is? Probably most of you, you may, but you may not, okay? But my, my, my grandmother used to give me savings bonds every birthday, every Christmas, okay? It was the same thing, savings bond after savings bond after savings bond. It was never anything cool. And so anyway, she'd always give me these savings bonds. And so I always got them, and I thought, oh, yay, you know, thank you, Granny, and, and all this other stuff. And so we put it in the bank. But what I didn't know is, is that little piece of paper meant nothing at the time. But if I would let it mature, it would come back, and it would be worth a whole lot more to me later down the road. And that's exactly what sex is for us. God says, here it is. He, he's given us the desire, he's given us the knowledge and the want to because of the way we're wired. Obviously, we are very different. Gentlemen, do you understand women? No. Me neither. No. Welcome, welcome. You will never, ever understand women. And women, do you understand men? <laughs> now, and, you, and you're not going to, okay? We're wired totally different. But the thing is, if we will wait until a certain point in our lives when God says, 
to give it up. And when God says it's okay to go, then our reward will be that much greater. Here's another question. What if you have already had sex? Can you redeem yourself? Yes, you can. You are not gaining back your virginity, per se. You are not getting back something that was taken, but you can start all over. Listen, here's the deal. Is smoking a sin? Is it? Is cussing a sin? Lying? Stealing? Premarital sex? You can be restored for it all. See, it doesn't matter where you go or what you've done, you can still be restored, and God will restore you tonight because I know out of a group this big and the way you all post yourself so provocatively on Facebook and Twitter and everything else that there are young ladies and young men in this room who have had sex before marriage, but God can restore you. He can do it tonight. All right, check this out. It says, um, God, do you love me? Yes, he does. Yes, he does love you. He loves you very much. In fact, he loves you so much that he thought you were worth dying for, that he gave his life on the cross for your sins, whether sexual sins or no matter what the problem was, no matter what it was, whether depression or suicidal thoughts, all the worry. Guys, he died for you. That's how much he loves you. Now, check this out. It's a deep question. And more than likely, more than likely, whoever wrote this has had to deal with this. So uh, if you are raped, is it still a sin? Even if it was out of your control, yes, to be raped is definitely out of your control. You have no control over that. And for anyone in this room who has been raped, can I tell you something? I don't know how you feel because I've not been in that situation, but I can tell you this. God has forgiven the situation. You were not responsible for it. You had no control over it. And he still loves you, and he will restore you back to fullness and completeness. You have no control over that, and there's nothing that you could have done to fix it. So if you have been raped, if you have been molested, God still loves you. He has a purpose for you, and he totally understands that it was out of your control, and uh, and he's, he's already got that fixed. Now, check this out. It's a good question. He says, if you're single but you have Christ, what do you do when you need that earthly comfort? Well, here's the deal. When you're single and you're looking for some earthly comfort, I believe God gives that. Now, I guess it depends on how you read that question and how you take it, okay? We can take it as in the lovey-dovey stuff, or we can take it as in just having somebody there. But can I tell you all something about sex that most people don't believe in your all's, your all's age group? In fact, most people in the world don't believe this. Sex is so much more than just a feel-good. Sex is so much more than just, hey, man, that pleased me and that pleased her and it's all over and we're done and we can go home. No. See, sex wasn't intended that way. When God developed sex, he said, you know what, here's what it is. I want you all to have a deeper bond. Because the Bible actually says, and we're going to talk about this here in just a few minutes, the Bible actually says that when God designed man and woman, he designed two separate entities. But he realized that they needed to become one. And so it says that, he says to leave your father and your mother, and if you've ever been to a wedding, you'll hear this. Most pastors use it. It says to leave your father and your mother and to unite as one. And when you unite as one, you are not only uniting as one in the bond of marriage, but you're doing it sexually, which also means that you are giving a whole lot more than just pleasure, but you're giving your heart. And that's the reason that premarital sex is wrong. It's because any time it happens outside the the bounds of marriage, it's not necessarily the fact that it's just sex. It's the fact that you're giving up something that you don't have to give anyway. You're giving up some some sort of love that you say you have for this person or some kind of something that you have that is special, not to mention your purity, and you're giving it up to somebody that really doesn't care about you, and more than likely you don't care about them. And if you do, it's not going to be for very long because I guarantee you the guy's going to walk out and then you're going to be left crying and posting all over Facebook about it, right? Mm Mm-hmm. See it every day. All right. Uh, Last weekend, or last week, I made the comment about homosexuality, and here's a question that came in. It says, so are you saying that all homosexuals go to hell because of the way they live their life, but liars and other people committing sins do not? No, I did not say that. Uh, Sorry if that's the way you took it. Here's the deal. Same thing. Premarital sex is sin. Cussing is sin. Lying is sin. Stealing is sin. Homosexuality is sin. There's no difference in sin. God views sin all the same way. In fact, God views sin so much, he says lying is just as bad as murder. 
Wow. Now, how many people in here have murdered? How many people in here have lied? Some of y'all lying right now. Raise your hands up. <laughs> Liars. All right, so check this out. We've all sinned. Homosexuality is a sin, but God can forgive that like he can every other sin. Just because they have walked into homosexuality doesn't damn them from hell. It's the sin that they continue to live in, and when they hear that it's something they can do about it and they refuse to change, that's what sends them to hell. There's no difference in us. Right now you are hearing that Jesus Christ can save your soul and forgive you of all your sins. But if you continue to go out here and cuss like a sailor, you're just as bound as that homosexual is because you're controlled by something that is not really what you're supposed to be controlled by. I'm going to do one more question. What do I do if one of my very close friends feels like the church judges her because she is bisexual and I don't know how to help her understand? Okay, here's the deal. Um, other churches, I'm just going to be honest, there's probably a lot of churches that will judge her, and I'm just going to be honest, there's probably people at this church who will judge her. But can I tell you, don't ever put your trust in the people. Don't put your trust in me or this church or Brian or any other pastor. Put your trust in Jesus because Jesus is the one who has control. He's the one who's got stay in your life. Listen, I'll let you down. Donnie Bird's going to let you down. Dana's going to let you down. But Jesus Christ will never let you down. He's the one who's for us all the time. He's the one who can restore us. I can't restore you. you. I'm not a priest. You don't have to come down here and tell me your sin. Just tell Jesus, man. Let him have control. Okay? So check this out. Here we go. I, I want to kind of get into the study now, and we, we're going to have to move pretty quick because we've got we've got to break down in tonight and give you guys a, an opportunity to discuss with your age group and, and your sex whether or not you have any questions about everything. So here's the deal. Um, you know, some things in life are, are pretty important. Some things in life require a lot of preparing, uh, preparing and preparation. Um, things like uh, maybe an emergency evacuation plan or weddings or the first few plays of a Super Bowl. Would, wouldn't you agree? These things take a lot of planning. I've often heard the saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's exactly right. Without the proper plans, we do fail. Some people really like to take planning to a whole new level. I, Paige, man, she likes to be organized. When she comes into my office, I won't find anything for a month because she literally takes my mess and turns it into whatever she calls it, some kind of beautiful, fabulous kind of whatever organization. And to me, I'm like, oh, man. Oh, what? Oh, I mean, because me, I mean, stuff's everywhere, but I know where it's at, you know. But I, I don't really, I just kind of fly by the seat of things. I'm like, oh, okay. Somebody comes up and like, hey, Daniel, here's an envelope. I'm like, thank you, man. I just lay it down on my desk and go on. But Paige is like, no, envelopes are here. Papers are here. Dollar bills are here. This goes here. And so I'm like, okay, all right. So I just go along with it. Eventually, you'll learn not to complain and just say, okay, okay. And so here's the deal. We just go along. But she likes to organize. I do not. She likes to prepare. I'm just kind of ready for anything. And so a lot of people are like that. But, guys, there's some things in life that it takes major preparation for. We prepare for ball games. We prepare for club events. We should prepare for tests, whether or not you do. But we should prepare for these big events. And one thing that is just as important in, in a, in, and should have just as much preparation is the fact that we should be ready for whatever comes our way. You see, when God designed sex and when he designed humans, he didn't just design us and say, okay, you're out there on your own, figure it all out. No, he sent an instruction manual called the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before leaving earth, and he says, this is exactly what I need you to do. So read it, first of all, and understand it secondly. So how do we understand it? Here it is. It says, and this is in Genesis chapter 2, verses 23 through 24, God didn't waste much time until he began to talk about sex. But check this out. He says, then the Lord made a woman from the rib, he had taken out of man, and he brought her to man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and his mother and is united to be with his wife, and they become one flesh. I told you all ago that the reason we are supposed to leave the families that we are 
our wrists right now and eventually one day become one flesh as a man and a woman uh, bonded in marriage is because that's exactly what God wanted us to do. Notice again, it says one man and one woman, not two men, not Adam and Steve, but Adam and Eve. And so it says that we are supposed to join together one man and one woman and be together and become one flesh. See, God blessed creation in two ways. The first way is the separate being of both males and females. Our gender is always trying to figure out the other gender. And God divinely designated and blessed both of them. He gave women talents that he did not give men. He gave women beauty. And looking at you guys tonight, he obviously didn't give you that, okay? (laughs) Now, he gave women the ability to question everything. 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 And he gave men the common sense to just go, you know. But hey, we got to be careful. There's a lot of women in the house tonight, a lot more of them than there are of us. So, But he gave them the ability, and he gave us the ability. So he blessed us separately. But check this out. The real blessing comes once we unite as one in marriage. You see, life is fantastic right now. It should be because I promise you, I don't care what anybody else tells you, these are the best years of your life. I'm 25 years old, and I'm already written it off, man. I'm done. I'm going to the retirement home next week. I really am. My life's done. I'm done. You guys should enjoy it. Enjoy life and enjoy what God has given you because these are the best years of your life. And what these little relationships seem so good right now, and they seem so fantastic that we got a boo. And he's good, and he's hot, and he's got a six-pack. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that, that one day he's going to turn to flab, and, and, that, and that hunk is going to turn to a chunk just like me. I promise you, it's going to happen. So check this out. Yeah, Peaches is already there. He's already there. He, Peaches is going to be reversed. He's going to be reversed. One day we will see him on the cover of some kind of clean magazine. I don't know. (laughs) Swimsuit edition. (laughs) All right, but check this out. Stay with me now, guys. When God created us to become together and form one, he wanted us to experience and enjoy something that we couldn't get anywhere else. Sex is that important. And I know the world tells you guys that everybody's doing it. Or maybe you've heard the lie, if you really love me, you'll do it. What a lie from hell. Because you are to keep your purity in yourself as long as you can. I gave you two words last week. I said two words last week that I really wanted to drive home then, and I'm going to drive home again tonight because I feel like it's that important. One of those words was holy. Say holy. Another one of those words was honorable. Say honorable. Now, I want to give you some definitions, and I want to see if your life right now matches up to exactly where it should with the words that I just give you. Check this out. You ready? Holy. So what is holiness? How would you describe it? In the dictionary, it says, specially recognized as or declared sacred by religious use or authority. It means consecrated. In the Bible, if something was holy, it means it was set aside and it was different. Temples are a good example. And I want you to think about this. It's ironic that this is in the lesson because me and Donnie were talking about this today at lunch. But temples are a lot like that. And how many of you all think a temple or a church house is holy? Anybody in here think a temple and a church house is holy? Okay. All right. So here's the deal. We all look at a temple and we say, hey, that's holy. But where is that temple at? It's where? It's in the world. See, so you can be holy as a young lady and still be in this world. You can be holy as a young man and still be in this world. The, Jesus says to love them, but to not be around them. He says to, to go out into the highways and the hedges. He says you're going to be hated by the world because they didn't even like him. So if they didn't like Jesus, why are they going to like you if you have Jesus? And so here's the deal. He says that we are to be holy just like a temple. And just as a temple is a place that is seen as holy, but it's in a messy old world, we are the same thing. Our lives are to be holy, even though we're in this world. Check out Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2. And it says, The Lord said to Moses, Tell your brother Aaron that he is not to come whenever he chooses into the most holy place. Behind the curtain in front of the atonement cover on the ark, or else he will die. For I will appear in the cloud, 
over the atonement cover. Now, if you guys will remember, the last series we just come out of was on worship. And Beth spent over a month talking and teaching us about what the Bible says about worship. And one of the things she talked about is the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Now, the Ark of the Covenant was designed by God, and it was placed, and it was the most holy place that you could get to, the most holy playing thing that you could be a part of, and it sat behind a curtain. And if you remember, how many of you all remember her talking about the bell that was tied to the priest's ankle? And if the bell stopped ringing, they just pulled him back out because he was dead, because he was unclean. Y'all remember that? I wonder how many of us in here tonight, if we tied a, a bell around our ankle and sent us in here to the church house, how many of us we'd have to drag back out because we wouldn't be holy. So check this out. He says, the Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron that he is not to come whenever he chooses into the most holy place. See, we don't come, we don't choose when we are to come into a holy place. God will tell us. And so God has given us in his word a time when it is okay to have sexual intercourse with another person. He has given us a time, and he says that's inside the bounds of marriage. In 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20, it says, Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commit are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You see, guys, here's the deal. It's not that God is trying to say, hey, sex is awesome, but I'm punishing you. Don't have sex until you're married. No, 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 no. I've said this a thousand times, but I really want you to get it. It's because God is saying sex is so great, sex is so awesome inside of marriage. If you will wait, I will double bless you. Double bless you. The second word I gave you was honorable. And the dictionary says that to be honorable is being of high rank, dignity, or distinction. It means to be noble, illustrious, or distinguished. What is honorable in today's culture? I want you to think about one of the most important gifts you've ever gotten or received. What was it and why did it mean so much? Can anybody tell me about a good gift that you've ever received? Anybody ever get anything good that was just really awesome? I want to tell you about something that meant the most to me. When I graduated high school, I had worked for a man and a woman named Rod and Kathy Wigginton since I was in the seventh grade. I was a janitor at a little drugstore in Princeton, Kentucky. I worked Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, two hours a day, and I would sweep, mop the floors, restock uh, medicine bottles in the, in the thing. I cleaned the toilets, vacuumed, washed the windows. I did any kind of janitorial work and maintenance work at the drugstore. I did it from seventh grade until I was a senior in high school. Rod was the chairman of deacons at my church. Kathy was a Sunday school teacher, and she was also one of my school teachers. They were pretty prominent people in the community. They had a, a good job, a good backing, and a great family. And Orrin, did you know that when I graduated, I never will forget the day right before I graduated high school, Rod, my boss, walked up and he handed me $200 in cash. Which $200 for anybody nowadays, but especially a senior in high school, I was like, oh, heck yeah. You know, I had $200. But what his wife did, and, and it was them as a couple, but what his wife did spoke so much more volume into my life because what Kathy did, and, and to some of you this is not even going to resonate, but to me it was special because Kathy had a little bitty pot, a pottery dish that was handmade in the Caribbean. And it was a little bitty dish, literally about that size. And it was teal green and had a little fish on it. And she wrote on the back, one of a kind, because you truly are one of a kind. And, and that's, that's little. It probably didn't cost five bucks. But it meant so much because she gave from her heart to show me how much she loves me. She gave something small. It was a lot smaller than what her husband had given to me. But, man, her gift spoke so much volume. And I still to this day have that dish. And it still means so much every time I look at it because I see the love that that woman had for me, that she was reminding me that I am one of a kind. Now, listen, she gave to me the very, uh, it wasn't the very best, but she gave to me something that meant a lot to her and it ended up meaning a lot to me. But why did she give that to me? Why? Because she loved me. And the reason that God wants us to wait until we are married 
before we begin to, to mess around with somebody sexually is because of this. He wants us to give the person we love the very best we have. He doesn't want just half of a trash. See, we don't think about it when we're young, because I'll be honest, I didn't think about it when I was your age either, but I never had anybody stand in front of me and tell me what God's Word said about sex. Nobody ever did it, because churches are scared to do it, pastors are scared to do it, parents are scared to death to do it, because parents are more worried about being your best friend than a parent. And so somebody's got to do it. And so if I have to go down shipping all, we're going down and we're going to talk about it. So here's the deal. I remember, I remember being a young person. I remember going through the temptation. I am still tempted. I'd be a liar if I told you I was never tempted to look at a young lady. I'd be a liar if I was tempted. I, I never had any kind of temptation to mess around. I would be a liar if I said that, that I didn't fail. I would be a liar if I said that stuff. Because here's the deal, guys. I struggle with it, too. But I'm helping you out by giving you what God's word says and how he says to, to point our direction to. So check this out. When it comes to, to being honorable, how many of us can say we are honorable? In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4, it says, The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but he yields it to his wife. So what this means is it means that once you become married and you become one as a whole, it means that as a husband, my body becomes my wife's. And as a whole, her, wife, or her body becomes mine. And it's not the fact you're saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm all yours, I'm all yours, and all this other stuff. No, it's the fact of God's Word says that we are to wait till that special moment so that I can get there and I can say I give you the very best. Now, I've told you before, most of you have heard my story about how I messed up and how one day, and Paige already knows this because we talked about it a long time earlier, okay? But one day I'm not going to be able to give her my best because I give it up to some, some girl a long time ago. But one day she'll be able to give me her best because she has waited and she has held on. Now, I would sure hate to know that the person I say I love so much, enough that I'm going to be in the bonds of marriage with, is not going to be able to give me something because they love me so much that they're going to be giving me secondhand stuff. And I'm going to get real real with you, and I'm going to speak to you real for a minute because this will get your attention. I want you to hang on to it. Young ladies, can I tell you something? If you are messing around with a boy, and he more than likely has been messing around with somebody else, and you have sex with him, did you realize you just had sex with her too? And all the other girls that he's had sex with? Not to mention all the guys that they've had sex with and all the girls that they've had sex with. So I'm not really good at math. But if we were to do the math and we take somebody who's sexually active with one another and a couple of people, before long we begin to spread out. We slept with the whole daggone community. And that's why STDs are so rampant. That's why everybody's eat up with every kind of stuff that even Ajax won't take off. 409 ain't going to have a bit of luck. Because, guys, this stuff, is, this stuff is messing our lives up. And it's not that using a condom and birth control is going to fix it. It's, daggone it, being abstinent and saying no is going to fix it. Now, listen, my adults and my staff, they support me. And some of you all in here agree, but don't dare clap your hands and say, yeah, I agree with you, Brother Daniel, and then go out and be a whore on the weekend. Because here's the problem. I know you're doing it, and here's the deal. Check this out. Can I tell you something? You know when y'all wear those low-cut shirts? And you know when you're showing all that cleavage and all that stuff in your back end, too? And guys, you know when you're taking pictures? Man, this is the most hideous thing I've ever seen in my life. Somebody should slap you if you're getting on Facebook and taking a picture of yourself with your shirt raised up. And like, yo, dude, you, you holding the camera by yourself, punk. You ain't even got a friend to hold the camera for you. So check this out. You, you real thug nasty when you do it by yourself. <laughs> I think me and Brian ought to post some pictures on there like that. Y'all be like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but check this out. Can I tell you something? Stay with me. Stay with me. Check this out. When you do that, when you, gentlemen, when you post pictures of your bare stomach, and I'm being honest, and girls, when you're showing cleavage and you're showing off everything that you know God has given you, when you do that, you know what you were telling the, other, the opposite sex? Hey, I care more about the way you look at my body than I do the way you feel about my heart. That's true. 
That is a true word right there. You're saying I am more worried about the way you look at me sexually than the way you feel about me emotionally. And let me tell you something. Sex is, it may feel good right now, but one day sex ain't what's, isn't going to be what's going to keep a marriage together. Sex is not what's going to be keeping somebody strong through it all. Because in the generation we live in today, how many of y'all come from a, a split home, a broken home? Check this out. Look around. Check this out. All right, can I, t- can I tell you something? I'm not downing anybody, man. I love everybody. I love you guys, but here's the deal. You know why marriages fail today? It's because I do, for better and for worse, for sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, has turned into I do for when it's comfortable until I get tired. And that is unacceptable in the eyes of God, and that should be unacceptable in our eyes as well. And so the reason I tell you this stuff, and the reason I'm so passionate about it, and the reason we're doing a whole sex and dating series is because, guys, I want you to guard yourself. So I'm going to give you some tips real quick, and I'm just going to preach just free for a minute, okay? Beth, if you want to, you can come on up. I'm not going to promise I'm going to shut up, but you can come on up, and we'll start playing, okay? So here's the deal. Check this out and stay with me. Gentlemen. When you're with her or whoever, you should treat her like she's God's daughter. And young ladies, you should treat him like he's God's son. And I promise you, if you'll start looking at her and looking at him that way, everything will change. Can I tell you something? People say, well, how do I do it? How do I stay strong? Can I tell you, man, this is going to sound crazy. I was a student at at Campbellsville University for three years. I lived in the dorm for one of those. Our rule in the dorm was you could only have the opposite sex inside of your dorm, uh, like I think one day a week or something, I don't even know, maybe one, two, something like that. And they had this rule that I thought was so stupid. Now, I was a Christian. I was even going to school to be a minister, but I thought this rule was stupid. And here's why I thought it was stupid is because I was thinking wrongly. But they had this rule that says all feet must be touching the floor at all times. No laying down. Now, how stupid does that sound? But, you know, I get older, and I realize, and I'm like, man, they were just trying to protect us. They had what was best in mind for us. They were saying, hey, you know what, Johnny? You don't want to be tempted with that girl that's looking real fly sitting next to you? You don't want to mess up and lay down with her and have sex with her? Here's how to fix it. Don't lay down. That's right. Don't turn off the lights. Don't be getting all huggy-feely. Don't be trying for first, second, third, or any kind of other base. That's right. Stay where you are. Hey, listen. You know what keeps us going as a couple? It's not kind of sexual relationship. It's the love that we have. You want to see love? It's not in the back seat on a Friday night. It's the emotional togetherness that you have to where I can finish her sentences and she can finish mine. It's the emotional togetherness that we have that when we laugh at the silliest, daggone goofiest things, even if it means me running up and down through the living room acting, acting a little crazy, but, but when we have fun, when we're together as a couple, it's the true love that gets us through. Not some kind of messing around with somebody just to prove a point. And so you say, how do I be strong? Daniel, I don't understand. I'm in a relationship right now. What is it that I need to do to be strong? Can I tell you? There's a few things. First of all, it's exactly what I told you. Don't put your feet on the ground. If you're watching something, well, that's silly. That's stupid. We're just going to kiss. You know what? I used to tell them, I said, hey, girl, all we're going to do in this relationship is kiss. Yeah, right. Hey, girl, I promise we ain't going no farther. We ain't going no farther than kissing. That was a lie. Maybe I didn't mean for it to be, but that's what it was. Because I just continued to open the door after door after door after door after door until I got what I wanted. And it's just like I told you all last week, they will tell you everything under the sun just to have a little bit of what you've got. Because that's all they think about. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's all they're thinking about. Sex. Sex, sex, sex. Girls are like, oh, love me. Let's watch a sweet movie. Guys are like, hey, girl, can I lay you? I, that's the truth. I know because I walk through those shoes. I, I'm, be, I'm being real, but if it takes me being real and pouring out my heart to help somebody keep their innocence, right. daggone it, I'll do it all day long. Amen. So, guys, here's the deal. God designed you with a purpose and a plan, and that is to remain pure and to remain holy. And it doesn't matter where you are or what you've done to mess up. 
It doesn't matter what footstep you've been through. It doesn't matter any of that. But what it does matter is this, that you understand right now, right where you are, girls, listen, right where you are right now, no matter what you've done, no matter what way you've messed up or who has done something to you, God has forgiven you and he is asking you to come to him and to start all over again. I know there's some of you in here now that are no longer virgins, both guys and girls. And unfortunately, in today's society, we walk around like that's something to be proud of, but really it's not. But I'm telling you that tonight, you can come forward and ask for forgiveness. Now, listen, it's not that God is sitting here and he's condemning you, saying, hey, man, you done had a baby. Hey, listen, you've had sex. I'm mad at you. I'm done with you. I'm not going to do anything good through you. Everybody hates you. Church people look at you like you're really weird. Church people condemn you. Can I tell you? You're probably right. Church people probably have condemned you, but a true follower of Jesus should not. If you are a young lady in this room and you have a child, can I tell you something? God is not angry at you. I'm not angry at you. This church is not angry at you. We want what's best for you. God can forgive you. And let me tell you something. I don't care what anybody else may tell you. Maybe your parents have said this. Maybe the world has said this. That baby is not a mistake. What you did was a mistake, but that baby's not a mistake. And there is hope for that child. God has a plan for that child, and he has a plan for you too. And so guys, listen. This altar's open. And if you need to pray, if you need to ask to be restored, maybe you just want to come talk to somebody. Now's the time to do it. I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes, and then we're going to be dismissed to our discussion group. But here's the deal. It's so much more than just me getting red in the face and up here telling you not to have sex until you get married because you could catch some kind of STD. Who cares? Don't have sex at all and you ain't got to worry about it. But here's the deal. I'm trying to protect your heart because if having sex, Chaz, outside of marriage is a different sin, it's our heart we're trying to protect. And so, guys, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to protect your heart. Would you pray with me? Father God, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for being here. God, I thank you for moving. God, I know right now you're doing a good work in somebody's life. Whether a young lady or a young man, Lord, you're restoring hearts right now. You're restoring lives. And Father God, I pray that wherever they have been, whatever they have done, Lord, that they may feel your forgiveness come upon their life. And God, I pray that you would continue to work in a mighty way. And no matter what, no matter what, Lord, Father God, I pray for a hedge of protection around each and every young lady that is under the sound of my voice. Each and every young lady that's in this room tonight, God, that they would keep their purity, and if they have lost it, that, Father God, they'd regain it tonight, and that, Lord, that they would hold on to it until it's time to be married and to give it to that one they love. And, Father God, I pray the same over these young men. Lord, I pray, I know the temptations are hard, but, Father God, when you take it away from them, Lord, at least lighten their load just a little bit. And Father God, I pray that they would be leaders instead of forcers. Father God, they'd lead these young ladies in a relationship with you instead of leading them to bed. And so God, thank you, Jesus, for loving us. And ask all this in your name.